guys this is Bright Ralph and today I'm going to hopefully show most of you how to reformat and reinstall any operating system you want on your computer without having to take it into the shop going to Best Buy or local shop and pay hundred two hundred three hundred dollars I have noticed I've been reading a lot on Facebook about Windows 10 and people what they've been saying about it thinking about it and I've noticed over the, over the course of a few months that this is a great video to make because what I've noticed is that a lot of people are having trouble with Windows 10 whether they just don't like it it works but they don't like it and they want to go back to 7 or 8 or whatever they had or uh, you know it it, it 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 when they installed it it pretty much screwed everything up but now they can't even boot into Windows 10 they're stuck at the screen or even worse their computer doesn't even turn on let me just start by telling you guys real quickly that there an operating system cannot destroy your hardware it cannot physically destroy hardware so if you install Windows 10, and I have seen this happen before, if your laptop is not turning on at all and powering on, it's not dead. Windows 10 cannot damage physical hardware. That is not possible. No, uh, no operating system is going to physically damage your hardware. Um, what's going on is something at a software level that's making it look like it's dead, but it's really not. In that case, I'm really not going to be able to help you guys. I technically could if you were here physically. Um, unfortunately, over the video, that's something that's not I'm not really going to be able to fit, help you guys with in a video form. So if you do have that issue, you um, you could try one thing. If it's a laptop, take your battery out of the laptop for like 30 minutes, put it back in, and then power it on and see what happens. So here's the other thing, and, and here's one more thing, is that when we're doing this, when you're reformatting, little bugs can happen. Now, I'm not, 80% of you, it's not going to happen to. The other 20%, there's a possibility that when you're trying to uh, reformat, that it might say, oh, you can't find the hard drive, and blah, blah, blah. And there's weird little bugs. I've installed Windows XP like 400 times. I've installed 7 like two, 300 times. I've installed 8 like 100 times. I've been around the block when it comes to uh, being a tech and especially installing OS's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And it's a very low percentage that you're going to have run into an issue while reformatting or installing. But that's also something personal that I can only help with if you're here physically. So I'm sorry if you do encounter issues while doing this tutorial, um, something that was not explained in this tutorial. Um, like I'm saying now, like a bug or something like that, then that is a case where you will have to take it to the shop and you're going to have to spend money. But for most of you, this tutorial is going to save you guys a lot of money and a lot of time. Uh, well, not time. I mean, you're going to spend your own personal time doing this. But it's also good because this will be good for the future, guys. So if, an, if anytime you want to install another OS or, or, or you have an issue or your hard drive dies, you don't have to take it to the store now. Because Ryan Ralph showed you how to fucking format your computer and um, all that good stuff and do it without spending, you know, a lot of money at the store. So, it's going to be a little difficult. It's going to be a little difficult showing you how to do this on video. Um, I'm going to use a virtual machine for obvious reasons. Uh, to go through the installation part. I can't show you the BIOS part in setting because the first thing you need to do um, once you have the ISO ready to go and you're ready to install is you need to go whatever medium you have it on you need to go to your BIOS and you need to uh, set what it, whether whether you're using a CD if you're using a CD then you want to set your CD drive to the first boot device that starts up uh, and if you're using a USB drive then um, when you have that plugged into a USB port when you restart and go into BIOS that will show up as also uh, as a device and you want that as number one if you're using that. Um, that I can't show you because I can't show you BIOS but it wouldn't really matter because honestly everyone's BIOS is going to be different so it's going to be different either way so um, so without that, without, with that out of the way but I will have a link that I'll show you guys that will explain that stuff so with that out of the way the first thing we're going to do is you need to choose what operating system you want to put on the computer um, whether you want to go back to 10 um, but you want a clean format, hoping that things work, and 9 out of 10, it probably will if you do, like I, like I explained earlier. If you do, um, most issues, Windows 10, are due to 
um, not installing it properly and installing it over on top of another OS. If you install the operating system properly, like I'm going to show you how to do, then you'll 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 not have most of the issues people are having. Most of the issues with 10 that you guys are experiencing, like I said, are because you're installing the operating system on top of its of, of your previous operating system, which always, 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 always causes issues. I've installed hundreds of operating systems, like not, but you know, I've installed a lot of operating systems hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And when you install it over on top of another operating system, you may have it you will always have issues but it may be in the future later on it might be two weeks down the road a month down the road even a year down the road or or it's going to be instant but you're always going to have um, negative results from doing so so the first thing you want to do is figure out what operating system you want to put back on it after you've had um, issues with 10 or whatever so you need to decide so the first, your options are, is most likely your computer already had Windows 7 or XP on it, right? And chances are, if that's the case, but most likely Windows 7. And chances are, if that's the case, you'll have a serial number on the bottom of your laptop or on the, or on the back of your laptop or, on the, on, or on, on, somewhere on your computer or laptop. There should be a little sticker that came from the factory that's on the machine somewhere. Sometimes on desktops it'll be on the back or on the sides. Or some it's it's somewhere on the case somewhere, guys. And on laptops it's usually on the bottom. It'll be a little window sticker and it'll have a key a a a, a red like a key code that'll be like a bunch of numbers and then a little thing separating it and then a bunch of numbers and letters and a little thing separating it. It'll be that's your product key. That's how you registry register your operating system. If you have a legit Windows 7 or 8 key then you can then you can what you can do is you can actually um, if you have a legit key then you don't need to buy the operating system again right now if you don't have the key you can you, you're gonna have to buy the operating system I in this video am not going to condone poverty okay I'm just not going to do it I'm not gonna get flagged I'm not gonna get in trouble and I just don't want to condone it because really it's not needed here. You can get Windows 7 for 30, 40, 50 bucks on Amazon or eBay. And it's not very expensive anymore, so you really shouldn't be stealing it. Um, I'm pretty sure Microsoft has a thing where you can download the ISO and just and if you have a legit key. I think I saw that a year or two ago where you go to the uh, site and you type in your legit key and then it lets you if you have a legit key it lets you download a legit ISO from it. let me go see um
Okay, apparently, guys, um, that service is no longer in use. Uh, apparently, they closed that program down. I don't know why. That was that was an awesome feature. Um, maybe it was be, be using malicious be used maliciously. I I don't know, but apparently it's not available anymore, which really sucks, especially for you guys. So unfortunately, um, as far as I can tell, at least. Um, Hold on a second, guys. Okay, this looks like it's only for 8.1. Uh, Windows 7. Um... Okay, okay, so I found it, guys. So for Windows, okay, I found it for Windows 10, 8.1, and 7. So I will put the link um, in the description for sure. Um, I'll put a bunch of links in the description for a lot of this stuff. But um, So what you can do is the first thing you're going to do is figure out what operating system you want to put on there. Now, if you're going to put... If you're going to put an operating system that you have a key for already, then this is where you want to go, is this website. I will put a link, don't worry, I'll put a link down in the description because this is a huge address. No one wants to type that crap. So I'll definitely put that in that and in the description below. And what you do is say, you say, okay, I, I, I don't want 10 on my computer anymore for whatever reason or it's not working right or whatever. And I have a 7 key and it's on the side of my computer or on the bottom of my laptop and I have the serial key so you click on win this Windows 7 you follow these steps basically you put your product key in here once it's verified uh, once this product requires valid code blah 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 after the product key is verified select product language select either 32-bit or 64-bit to download if both are available you receive download links for both uh, not received. so the other thing is, yes, you need to know whether you want 32-bit or 64-bit. Most cases, your guys, your computers will support 64-bit in almost every single case. Um, you can, um, and if you watch my previous video on how to optimize your machine, I show you this tool called Specky. Well, let me just show you again. It's called Specky. It's made by the same people who make CCleaner. Okay, this tool will show you. Uh, exactly what uh, what what operating system you have and what and and if it's 32 bit or 64 bit if it's 32 bit then go ahead and download the 32 bit version if it's 64 bit then go ahead and download the 64 bit version if your computer is not working if you can't if you don't know because you can't boot into it then my suggestion would be it to download 64 bit and try with that when you try and install it it'll say that if it's not compatible it'll say it's not compatible and then you can go retry this with 32 bit but I'd rather you I'd rather you try with 64 bit and then have maybe have a failure and have to go try 32 bit only because I don't want you to put 32 bit on your machine because that will run no matter what and if you have a 64 bit processor that can handle 64 bit operating system you're gonna really really reap the benefits of having that 64 bit OS so 
do the 64-bit one if you don't know if, you, if your computer's not booting and you can't run the software to check you want to go ahead and do that or you can also check the website where you bought the machine from um, and see because it should say uh, it might tell you if it's 64-bit or 32-bit chances are in this day and age it's probably going to be 64-bit if you bought it within the last two or three years um, but go ahead and try that first if you if you can't if you can't verify it beforehand with specking okay so blah, blah then then you do that and then what's gonna happen is you'll be able to download the ISO I've never been through this uh, process before so I don't know exactly what's gonna happen so just to make sure that they don't give you the, they let you just in case that they let you download the ISO but they don't give you information on how to install the ISO I'll give you another link that is the Windows 7 USB download tool just in case they don't link it to you if you pass this um, if you pass this step. So this is the USB download tool for 7 that lets you install it from a thumb drive. So I'll give you the link here. I'll give the link to this web to this page. Just in case they don't. But that's what you would do, guys. You would download the ISO, and then it's going to have instructions, like on here, and there's going to be instructions everywhere, and you're going to download the Windows 7 tool, and there's going to be instructions, and blah, 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 blah. And it's really not going to be hard. Um, it's really simple, especially with instructions. Don't worry about it. It's really basic. So you download the ISO. You download that program. You use the program to make your USB device bootable with the ISO on there. Um, Okay, so we've got that step. So now we've got the media that you guys wanted. You've got it on the boot. You've paused. You've downloaded the ISO that you needed or you wanted. Now, before we go any farther, just one more step. If you don't have a serial key or you lost it or it got wet or something, you can't read it or something like that, um, then unfortunately, um, you're going to have to buy an operating system. Um, if you're most of you are probably going to want to put seven in place of ten or eight, most of you are going to choose seven. So we're going to look at seven now. Seven's pretty cheap now uh, here. You, this is uh, sold. Um, shit, no. Okay, that's third party. I want to try and find you guys one that may not be third party. I don't think there will be though, just because it's so. Oh, here we go. Ships and sold by Amazon. This is home premium. Um, so it's not pro. But again, it's shipped and sold. Plus, it's, it's a little pricey. You can also go to um, what is it? Uh, CDKeys.com, I think. Yeah, you can also come here and you can get. I'm pretty sure they have. Um, no, okay, this isn't the website I was thinking about. Okay, never mind, guys. Um, I really don't suggest buying a CD key off the internet off a shady website anyway. I, re I, I would I would suggest buying it from Amazon or you know, like an actual copy from Amazon or eBay. Either way, there's some good choices here. This is uh, you know OEM System Builder, which doesn't come with support um, from for, for phone. But anyway, I think that's about to be dead anyway, so it doesn't matter. This would be your best bet as far as uh, the price. Either way, you can get your operating system offline uh, if you don't have the key to download the ISO with. So once you've got you're ready, right? You've got everything ready, whether it's a CD, USB drive, whatever ISO that you downloaded, or OEM disk, or whatever. You're ready, right, guys? And you're ready to go. So the next step is once you're ready to go and you have your media ready and your key ready and all that stuff. Now this is going to be different, obviously, because you're not going to do any of this. This is VirtualBox, but I'm using VirtualBox in order to show you how what what the installation is like. So so you won't be doing any of this, obviously. But um, again, just to kind of ignore this until we get into. Um, Just kind of ignore this, guys, until we get into the installation part. It's really simple, and honestly, this is going to save you some money. 
and um, I, I think you guys should just know how to do this. Because I thought, what a great idea for video. I, I, I saw, I've been reading that stuff lately about people complaining about having to, you know, downloading Windows 10 and not being able to get into Windows or just not liking Windows 10 for whatever many different reasons of why they want to take it to the shop. But then, it, you know, they complain because it costs money and they should, just shouldn't have downloaded it. Well, this will save you having to take it to the shop. At least, at least most of you. So right now it's just making a, the partition on my drive for, for this uh, virtual machine. Again, this this particular thing has nothing to do with you guys. This is just I'm using a virtual machine to show you guys how to do this. So it's going to start real soon though. I'm going to go to where I have my um, operating systems. These are my ISOs for uh, Ubuntu, which is Linux, Windows XP, and Windows 7. So once you go into BIOS, and you boot up your and and you and you set whatever medium you're going to install the operating system with to the number one uh, device to boot with Windows first. This is one, once it goes through everything and creates your partition. Unfortunately, I can't go through the partition creator part because I I can't record that. I, there's no way for me. I don't know how to get video footage of that. But when you first put in like. Here, here's another thing I wanted to show you guys. Here's another link that I'm going to put in the description, and this will how this will show you how to put whatever medium you install the operating system with, how to put it up on number one on the boot list. See, this is a boot list, right? And you basically want the device to be at the top of the list, um, so that it's the first the first one that you that has Windows whatever OS you're going to install needs to be the first bootable device. This guide will pretty much show you and tell you how to do that. Hopefully, if not, there's other guides on YouTube that you guys could find. This is just one that I think will be will be good for that. But once you do that and you boot up from that device, you're going to have this weird screen and it's going to want you to uh, um, uh, format the drive. You want to delete all, it'll have, to, it'll have options to delete the partitions you want to delete all of those partitions and and create a brand new partition guys that's what we're doing here that's why you're going to format the disk you're going to delete the partition wipe all partitions on the drive in that in that DOS blue like colored window when you boot from the installation media you're going to be presented with this window and it's going to give you access to the partitions on your drive you're going to delete all of them so the drive has no partitions on it. Then you're going to format the drive in NTFS. Okay. Or no, not um um you're going to format the drive, but it'll tell you which one to recommend. Uh it should be NTFS. I'm not sure it's um I, I haven't um I forget what what I use for Windows 10. I, I, I forget, I'm sorry guys, but um you're in, you're going it's it'll recommend you one so you pick you pick the recommended one you format it in that format and then when that's done then you can then you can um, create a new partition it'll tell you the default size to make it of your drive it's really simple guys once you get that done you'll be presented with this and this is the installation screen it is real simple you just hit install now and it'll run through the hardest part the most confusing part is going to be getting the installation media set up and ready to go and then getting um, getting all that stuff. Now most likely you won't see this. This version I have has every version of 7 so you probably won't get a list like this. Um, you just set the term hit next. Uh, you you want to do the upgrade if, if you're connected to uh, the deal already if your computer is connected to the thing. Wait, what just happened? 
I accept license. It said, uh, oh, here we go. Okay. This, so we are going to get to the partition area. Okay. So normally what you would do is um, you would delete. You would go to drive options, advanced, see, and you get delete, format, new. So I can't do this because this is, I can't do any of these tools because this is a virtual machine. So I can't show you. But um, what you would do is you would, you probably have two or three partitions on the drive, not just one. And you would highlight one, delete it, highlight one, delete it, highlight one, delete it. Now, you may end up with one that you can't delete, so you just end up formatting that one. It's really simple, guys. But once you get a queen, uh, a queen, um, um, a partition that's been formatted, you select it and then click next. And that's pretty much it. I can't show you everything because I can't record. Um, I can't because when you're in BIOS, you know, you don't have Windows loaded, so you can't open up programs and things like that. So there's no way for me to record that. I could record it like with my phone, but I don't. I don't want to put a new partition on my main drive and and things like that. I don't want to do that personally to my physical drive. There are videos, guys, on YouTube that you can go and find that show you how to do that part. So if you need to do that, you can go find those videos that show you how to do this part. But really, you probably aren't going to need those videos. It's pretty simple, guys. This isn't hard stuff. This is very basic stuff, and this is what they charge you for. You're paying $100 plus for them to simply put a CD or a USB drive into your computer, reboot, set, go into BIOS, set the boot, the drive they want or the medium they're going to use to install the operating system as the first bootable device, restart, load that up, cr delete all partitions, create a new partition, and then go through this installation process. That's all they're doing, guys. It takes an hour, maybe two hours if the guy's on experience. It doesn't take very long. It's very simple and very straightforward, and this is what they're charging you all that money for. And I, when, when friends want, want want me to reformat the computer, I don't charge them money. If I do, it's like 20 bucks. Because honestly, I don't think reformatting should cost any more than 50 bucks. I mean, I know they're a store and they have overhead and stuff, but really, I mean, it's such a simple thing, guys. It, you should not be spending, you know, hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars to get your computer reformatted. That's complete bullcrap. All they're doing is what you see me doing, and a couple steps that I can't show you. But but it but they're not doing anything special or really technical whatsoever. It's very 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 basic, um, just very basic linear things that we're doing here. But this is basically it. It's just going to go through this installation. And it's going to complete, and then it's going to boot into Windows 7, and that's that. Um, I guess we'll go through this, you know, if, if, if you want. It's no big deal to me, but I could end the video here because that's pretty much it. Um, but, yeah, that's what they're charging you guys for. That's what all that money is going to, and it's not worth it, guys. I, I've, I've been to um, school for PC technicians. And we were told to charge like $100 for a reformat, at least $100 for a reformat, no less than $100 for a reformat. And I never agree with that. I thought, but it's so easy. It's so easy a fucking 10-year-old can do it. Like, seriously, like, why? I know 10-year-olds that do it. Um, I don't understand why you would charge someone that kind of money for doing something that you don't really even do much of anything with. Now, if you occur, if you run into issues, and it becomes a huge headache, then yes, I could see charging that kind of money because of the time. But if you're going to run into issues and it ended up taking you three hours to get to get the drive recognized or something like that, um, then yeah, I can I can understand that. But but if you don't run into issues and it's just a clean, just a straight through, straightforward installation, which 99% of the time it's going to be. It's not worth that kind of money, and that's why I'm here. I want to help you guys. I, I want to make sure that so, so, I want to make sure that you guys aren't spending that kind of money just to just to put an OS on your machine. I mean, really, it's silly. Hit restart now. You won't. So do that. Don't press anything when it asks you to, because it's not. It, you want to continue the installation. If you do that, it'll bring you back to the very beginning of the installation. So don't do that. Just let it. Just let it go, like I did.
Again, don't touch anything, just let it go. Now, it installs insanely fast on uh, my machine because my machine is beast. Um, so, it's probably not going to install nearly as fast as that on your computer. And that's okay, it's not a big deal. I'm just letting you guys know the installation is probably going to take uh, anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes. Um, and it may take even a little bit longer, depend like I said, depending on your computer. So then you just blah, 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 blah. And if you don't want a password, just don't type one. Hit next. Use recommended settings. Next. Uh, home network. It may or may not connect to the home network right now because it's on a virtual machine. So I may actually have to install the uh, uh, guest additions. We will see. But that's pretty much it, guys. It's very simple and very straightforward. The hardest part you guys are going to struggle with is getting the media created and then uh, going through the first uh, in, the, in the DOF screens, uh, installation screens, going through formatting the drive and getting the drive, having, having putting a, a, a clean for, formatted uh, uh, um, uh, um, sector on the drive so you can install Windows 2. That's going to be the most difficult. And that itself is still pretty easy. Um, so I hope I've helped somebody out. I, I hope that I've showed you guys how, how to uh, avoid spending that kind of money at the store to do something so simple. Unfortunately, I can't show you all the steps for the reason, whoa, whoa, I don't know what just happened. Again, none of this is related to you because this is all in virtual box. So sometimes virtual machines do have weird little issues. Um, they're never used. They're usually, at least with my experience, they're never perfect um, because it is a virtual machine. But there it is, guys. So minus a few steps that I'm not able to show you, that's pretty much how you install a new operating system. And it's pretty much the same exact thing for Windows XP 7, 8, and 10. Um, so I, like I said, I hope I've showed you something useful. I hope you guys now don't have to spend that kind of money at the shops to reformat your, your machine. And yeah, if you have any comments, questions, or anything like that, please leave them down below in the comment section of this video. And I will do my best to answer all of them. Um, also, if this video did help you and you did successfully install your uh, OS of your choice because of me, please give me a subscribe. Please subscribe to me and like the video and let me know. Also, let me know that it helped you. But at least, at least subscribe to me if it helped you. Um, I think I deserve that at least if, if I was successful in helping you. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.